Produced by Victoire. Victoire gives a special thanks to the EWF, Empire Wrestling Federation, and Mr. Jesse Hernandez, as well as SoCal Wrestling TV. Find the app on Roku. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of Stylin' the Podcast. I'm your host, Emir, and I am joined by my co-host, former WWE superstar, the man who has more style than, quite frankly, anybody I know, anybody you know. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Rico Constantino. Ta-da! <laughs> We're styling today. We are styling, my friend. And before we go any further, you know what would look good to us? Is if you would all hit that subscribe button, right? That's there. right. Punch that button. Punch that. Lay the smack down on that subscribe button. Lay it down. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. So for fans who may not be familiar, and I'm not sure how you cannot be familiar, but some of you must be because you're younger. But yet, Rico, they might, you know, some of them may not be aware of who you were. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It is hard to believe considering all the great things that you did in your career. And he truly did. You know, for those who haven't seen, go back. I encourage you on YouTube, find some of Rico's old matches. But Rico, bring everyone up onto speed of when you debuted in the business and some of the highlights for you. My gosh. Uh, like I, I came to Las Vegas and my brother was part of a Empire Wrestling Federation in San Bernardino, a little independent league run by Jesse Hernandez, yeah. still run by him today, a wonderful league. And Jesse saw something in me um, and he got a tape up to Vince and I was called by Howard Finkel and he said, hey, kid, you want to come up for a 10 day dry out? And I said, yeah. So I went to Connecticut for 10 days and I was signed to a developmental deal. And, and then, yeah. And Rico, uh, tell everybody. So how old were you at the time? 38 and a half. There you go. Never too late. Never, Never too, too late. late. Never too late. Yeah. I, I, oh my gosh. Uh, that was the last Dory Funk dojo. So Dory and his wife were there. We were all in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and we we're all sitting down and Dory and his wife would talk to a wrestler about three or four minutes and move on to the next wrestler and mm -hmm. the next wrestler. So they got to me. And I was, I was happy. And he goes, well, what's your name? Told him. And he said, well, how old are you? And I told him 38 and a half. They paused. They looked at each other. Well, how long have you been in the business? I said, eight, ma eight months. <laughs> how many matches? 12. They stood up and walked away. Gosh. And I was like, uh-oh, this yeah. is not good. Yeah. yeah. This is not good. Yeah. But during the workout, the 10 day tryout, Dr. Tom was there, Dory, Jim Cornette. And I proved myself to them that I was serious about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had the wrestling bug, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was inside yeah. and I wanted to do the best I could. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of people do know this or don't know this. I got food poisoning in the middle of it oh, from the cafeteria. No. Yeah. Oh, so no. I was, on the toilet a lot, yeah. but it, I didn't miss a day of practice. Mm -hmm. I do whatever they told me to do. I, yeah. Time out, run to the bathroom, clean up, <laughs> run back out, do some more. Yeah. Oh, time out. Yeah. Run to the bathroom. Yeah. And, but I never, I, I always participated. And you were there, you were, when you were training, some of the, the other big stars from that ruthless aggression area were there with you. Batista, John Cena. No, Rand that's OVW. That was OVW. Okay. Right. Uh, Nicole Bass was there. Mark Henry was there when I was at the Connecticut tryout, the 10 day tryout. Uh -huh. And then we had to wrestle two days in killer Kowalski's territory. So we did, uh, first I went against Mark Henry mm -hmm. with Cornette no. and I got the racket, no. which was good. <laughs> and then I had a tag match the next day and, uh, they like what they saw. Yeah. Cornette, blew a gasket because i guess somebody finally told him how old i was yeah and he got in my face are you kidding me they just told me you're 38 and a half years old i said yeah i am uh yeah. because i thought you were 25 i said i was 
<laughs> at one time. And thank you for the compliment for thinking he's yeah. 25. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, after he calmed down and stuff, uh, Dr. Tom came up and he's, I think they're going to offer you a developmental deal. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And uh, Cornette started talking to me and he goes, listen, I'm going down to OVW. I want you to come down in July. And I was the first developmental for WWF at the time mm -hmm. to go to OVW. So I was the first one. Uh, Batista, Orton, Cena, Brock, mm -hmm. uh, all those guys came in after me yeah. and were fit into the program. Yeah. You do know, you, do you think, Rico, just sorry to interrupt that, but do you think that being a little more mature helped you? to adjust to life in the pro wrestling business based on what you've seen or heard of some of the younger talent that came in? Well, yes. I mean, my, I spent five years in military school, so I was very disciplined. I had a Sicilian father, which very strict. Uh, I never got into trouble as a kid. You know, I always followed the rules. Uh, like I said, military school taught me how to, if I want to achieve something, yeah. You got to work for it. Yeah. Uh, and me being more mature, older, I didn't have those cravings, mm -hmm. you know, to go out and party all the time and stuff like that. Yeah. I was trying to learn a craft yeah. and really quick because I didn't know how long my expectancy was going to be mm -hmm. in the business if I even made it to the main roster. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was soaking up knowledge like a sponge mm -hmm. as and fast what, as I could. And what went through your mind? I mean, you could just imagine like eight months into the business and now you're dealing with the biggest wrestling company of all time, the WWF at the time. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon signed you. How did you, being more mature, were you able to handle that or did you get all giddy and excited and run around and leap for joy? I mean, what, tell us, walk us through when that moment occurred. How well, you, you, you probably were there. It sounds like you were there because I was giddy, jumping, jumping for joy, going, I just got signed. By WWF? Yeah. I was in disbelief. I was like, I'm actually going to go to a developmental territory. Yeah. Actually, I went to all three. That's huge. What uh, was the, oh yeah, what was the third one? Uh, OVW in Louisville, mm -hmm. Power Pro in Memphis, and Heartland in mm -hmm. the Cincinnati tri state area. Yeah. And Hornet really believed in me. So did Jim Ross. So did Danny. And Hornet, because he booked all those shows. He, uh, I won all three heavyweight titles at one time. So I was touring as the heavyweight champion in all three territories and being on TV. Mm -hmm. That's how much Jim believed in my talent. Mm -hmm. How long and, were you, how long were you there, Rico? In, in training? About a year and a half. About a year and a half. Yeah. And I tore my quad in a match on TV and, uh, Vince didn't have to do this, but he did. Uh, he flew me home. He got me fixed, best surgeon, and the physical therapy, Keith Clevins. Those are the people like Mike Tyson, Steffi Graf, Andre Agassi. Go to this guy. Okay. That's how good he is. And Vince took care of everything. And he still gave me my monthly check. That's really good. Was, you know, and this doctor here said, well, you'll never wrestle again. Mm -hmm. And I went, what? He goes, I don't think you'll ever wrestle again. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Tell me again. Mm -hmm. you'll never wrestle again Good. say it again you'll never wrestle again he goes what are you doing i said i want you to keep telling me because i am going to get back in the ring yeah yeah six seven months later i came back gosh yeah and that's and that's something else viewers i will let you in on that coming up soon in the near future we're going to be talking about several other incidences where rico overcame the odds in fact, several years ago, you know, you were virtually at death's door, but yeah. you overcame that again. You know, thanks to God, you know, you overcame that. And we're going to talk at length, but be, you know, make sure you subscribe because we'll see that in a future episode. But going back to the beginning now. So when you're in the developmental territories, I mean, you can go on YouTube and see it. You had the long, you had the mullet. You were, yeah. not, you were not the stylist yet. No. And you were My rocking a style. My mullet was so good, I called it a moule. Moule. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rocking that mullet. Yep. Well, that was the style, man. And, yeah. and you, but in in those territories, you weren't the stylist. You were no. 
Rico Constantino, um, the American Gladiator champion, the American Gladiator champion. So you were tough as nails, super athlete sort of thing. That was your gimmick, your moniker. Right. right so right. now, now consider, considering we're talking about style, and we're going to talk about many wrestler styles on this show. How did you find and fine tune the stylist? Because that's how you debuted on WWF TV. So, right. So tell us the process that you took to find the style of Rico, the stylist. Well, uh, like I said, I was on the road for 90 days. They were trying to think of something for me or I was going to get cut. Mm -hmm. And I believe Stephanie McMahon came up with the manager for Billy and Chuck to get them heat. And Raven and I spoke a couple of times. He says, you know, you like being a face or a heel? I said, I like being a heel. He goes, then do something about your face. I said, what's wrong with my face? He goes, you're too pretty. Grow some sideburns. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, the Elvis sideburns, honky tonk, man, the rock, corporate rock sideburns. I went, nah, I'm going full Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I started developing those and I was on my week off and I got a call, uh, Finkel and said, "Uh, we need you to get to the airport and come up to Ottawa. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, why no we'll tell you when you get here just bring some stuff and get up here so i brought my wrestling gear and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i show up at the arena and they tell me i'm going to be billy and chuck's manager and i'm like i barely know how to wrestle now you want me to be a manager yeah. i got on the phone with kenny bolin i'm like kenny what do i do how do i do this mm-hmm. went to billy and you know billy's a tag team specialist he goes, kid, don't worry about it. I got you. Just do what I tell you. I said, okay. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have, you know, I can't go out in wrestling clothes as a manager. Yeah. So I had black pants and a black shirt. Okay. And that's what I did the first couple of weeks. Because mm-hmm. when I got there, you know, Vince says, you're going to be their stylist. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, what? Hairstylist, feet stylist. What? He goes, flesh it out. And he turned around and walked away on me. Okay. And creative wasn't helping me mm-hmm. and i'm going on stylist so i go out a couple of weeks and when i get home i used to lay in the 30 minute tanning bed okay not basically for a tan but for it the heat on my muscles you know it helps relax me you had one I, you had one at home no no i i go to a salon or whatever yeah. they call it nice. and i go in there and just sit in the 30 minute bed i know i have 30 minutes and I would just think, stylist, stylist, stylist. What is this? And all of a sudden, it hit me in the head. I am going to be an image consultant. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be an image consultant, PR guy for the tag team champions. And it just popped. Yeah. And I said, I got to wear some wild outfits. I got to be over the top. Yeah. And Godfather and I have been friends for years, years. Right. And um, I called him up because he was on his way out. Mm -hmm. I said, where'd you get those clothes? I got to get some of those. And he goes, oh, there's a swap meet on Vegas Drive. I said, I know where it's at. I walked in there and then I saw where these outs were. I started salivating. Yeah. Okay. I want the alligator suit. I want the tiger stripe. I want the snake skin. And then I got the YMLO shirts. And then I got my ears pierced. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah that's right you had your ears yeah and i put belly button rings in my ear so if i wore the black alligator suit with a red shirt i had red red jewels and red red lenses wow. and i came out like that and then if i wore the blue blue yeah. lenses yeah blue jewels yeah and i came out like that Image. you know and I always came out like i was this is it folks yeah. You got to get on board. Look what I'm doing for the champions. And then I never get involved in the match, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I just started finding stuff and, and I said, okay, this is how I'm going to make this character work. Mm -hmm. And it got to a time where I wouldn't even do anything. I just come out stand there and the whole place would be yelling. Rico sucks. (laughs) And I'm turning around going, wait till I interfere. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, let me do something. They, they were just Rico sucks right there. I guess it just rolls off the tongue. Well, well, you were over. You were totally. Yeah. So, I mean, you were. I mean, but you arguably, I mean, obviously, Billy and Chuck and Rico is, it's gone down in the annals of time. 
That is that was a, a great entertaining tag team. And I think by having the image consultant, it really brought it to life. Uh, some of those moments I remember when you did backstage interviews and you'd say certain things or give them a certain look if they were. I remember one where you came in and they had black. That was it. They had black outfits and you didn't like it or something. No. I think it was before you went back to the, they went to the red outfits. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, just adding those little touches was so funny. And even though you guys, how long were you doing that that gimmick for? The stylist gimmick, for, I think, for about two years. Two years. But, yeah, but with Billy and Chuck, not so long. But uh, the stylist broke off and became a, a singles wrestler. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got I was doing Velocity or Heat, depending on, I, you know, I started on SmackDown, so I was on Velocity. Mm -hmm. And then uh, switched over to Raw. Mm -hmm. after the wedding mm -hmm. and then i was on heat and i was with rosie and jamal god rest them yeah yep. um they were good to work with and there was times i'd start the show you know those that's the two important matches the beginning and the main event yeah uh, those are the two important to get them to come back yeah so i was either one or the other i either started the night off and there was a couple of loss a couple of uh heats mm -hmm. were uh, I came out first and did a match and then I came out with three minute warning mm -hmm. and they did a match. Yeah. So there was a couple of times that I doubled it up. Yeah. I got to ask you, Rico, is that the original, uh, uh, jacket suit that you're wearing right now? Is that, Oh, the this is, this is TV worn there original. It is. There, there it is. is. That is the original. Look, even the pants. Yep. He's got the pants and Rico, are you going to show the audience? You even got the shirt. I got everything. It's everything's original. Full, All TV worn. TV worn. He's back. Honestly, Rico. And, and he also, Rico, your transformation. You're back in tip top shape. You even got yep. the elbow pad on. <laughs> I, when I go, I go all the way. Yep. That's it. We're going all the way, fans. Here on Styling, yep. you're getting a WWE-style experience. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. But, yeah. No, Rico, wow, I'm looking at you because I haven't seen you for a few months in person. But, yeah, look at your arms, man. You're – you're they're styling back in shape. I've been at the gym, yep. and I just switched my workout, you know, because you got to change it every six, seven months. Mm -hmm. Now I'm back to push-pull. So mm -hmm. I do chest, shoulders, tries, back, buys, traps. Yeah. legs yeah which is so, good which is a good combination it's good to change it like you said to change it every so often the body gets used to it um and that's another topic that you and i are going to jump into shortly here but i want to stick with the stylist for for right. a little bit about you know finding that style and, and how some of the younger guys today maybe some of those that are watching right now stress the importance if you will rico of of really developing a look to match a character and a personality because we see a lot some guys have a great personality great character but to look at them they look very similar to somebody else on the roster they're not distinguishable so you know i'm gonna let you take the floor on that since you're the guy who's been in the business well for me to be this style i had to set myself apart i had to stand out mm -hmm. you know the sideburns weren't enough mm -hmm. uh Everybody does the moves, you know, so that's not enough. You just have to go over the top mm -hmm. with everything. Uh, and you got to internalize it. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was the stylist in my head, I was this stylist. Right. And you have to develop that yourself. And when you come out, you have to be that character. Because if you don't believe it, the fans aren't going to believe it. Right. You know, and... Uh, like I said, if I kept coming out in the black shirt and the black pants, which is boring, mm -hmm. I don't think I've got as far, right. you know, uh, and Stevie Richards did that after he did right to censor mm -hmm. black on black. And I didn't want to copy him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be unique. Yeah. yeah. You know, and Godfather was very unique, but he had the ladies, the whole train and stuff. So it was a different way he went because mm -hmm. he was playing the pimp thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, with the hat and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be over that. Yeah. 
you know, and the way I talked to Billy and Chuck, God gave him styling, you know, oh, the headbands don't match. This is blase. Come mm -hmm. on, change those boots. Come on. Yeah. What, what is this? I'm not running no ragtag tag, rag tag, tag, tag team. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and the little interviews, you know, get psyched up and then smack them in the butt, <laughs> you know, or mm. Billy or Chuck would smack Billy in the butt. Like just doing that type of stuff that just makes people laugh. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, I got a lot of stuff from the fans, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're leaving, they're out back and you're signing autographs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it always happens. You know, the fan would come up to me and go, you know what would be really funny? Yeah. Hold on. What? And they would tell me what they think was funny. Really? I'd That's write that stuff down. Yeah. And then I'd go home and think about it. And then I'd make it myself. I mm -hmm. would internalize it and then project it. Yeah. That's the whole thing. You got to project your character. You got to believe you're actually that character. Yeah. And yeah. you know my background. Yeah. And you know what I've done in life. Yeah. That's a complete 180. Right. Totally. This stylist character is a 180 of who I really am. Yeah. Yeah. So to the extreme. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to really put effort into it to, like I said, make them believe it mm -hmm. because I believed it. But something you said there, Rico, which is so refreshing, and oftentimes, especially with Vince McMahon, and we know we've got, by the way, viewers, we got a special coming out next week, the Vince McMahon special. Rico and I will analyze it and break it down and obviously share stories of when Rico, uh, well, he did share one today with when Vince McMahon actually helped you in the beginning. So we, we look forward to that. Yeah. But, um, but, but they got to hit that subscribe button. They got to hit that subscribe button. That's right. You've got to hit that subscribe button, you know, otherwise to keep up with all the action here. Yep. But uh, one of the things is you talked about the fans giving you ideas. Mm -hmm. We often heard before that, you know, this promoter never paid attention to what the fans wanted or what these people wanted. So you were doing that. And also I wanted mm -hmm. to add there, you weren't really getting a lot from creative. As you said, Vince just said to you, here you go, make something of it. Flesh it out was his Flesh words. It out. Yeah, flesh it out. So, you know, to take initiative, because I'm sure that's happening today. I'm sure of that. I'm positive. So, but to take initiative, because again, you know, what is going to distinguish you from the pack and what is going to make people remember you in 30, 40, 50 years from now? It's a whole package. I can't believe it's come up on 20. I know. It's shocking. It really is. I, 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 was, I was watching your match. We talked about it before we went on the air. Audience, I, I encourage you to go and watch it against Ray Mysterio Jr. Must that was, yeah. it was in Mohegan Sun. Mohegan Sun? Yep, 19,000 people. Gosh. And Ray, hats off to Ray, because Ray, excellent wrestler, uh, he let me do my stuff. Yeah. Yo, know, he, he let me shine during the heat. It wasn't all chokes and stuff. There were moves that I wanted to put out there mm -hmm. yeah. you know and he let me do it yep. and that's when i they said wow he can do that and here i am 43 yeah or 42 right about that time about 42 uh -huh. 43 and 44 was the other character oh yes we'll get in that later but yeah we'll get into that one later <laughs> yeah but uh yeah ray let me showboat yeah. let me get my stuff in and you know Cannot thank him a much. It was that was about an eight minute barn burner match. There was no hold. Yeah. There was no sitting in. No, we were back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. You know, it was and, so crisp, Rico. It was yeah. so crisp. Uh, it looked like you'd been wrestling your whole life, like Ray. That's that's how well it came across. Uh, but again, you were distinguishable characters. That's why we're talking about it today. But yeah, yeah. gosh, I can't believe it was twenty years ago. Twenty. 22 years ago. Hard to believe, Rico. I know. Too. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter. You're still here and we're still, you know, the stylist is back. Yep. But, but moving on a little bit, Rico, there um, to now physical presentation, because right. we talked about your physique. We're going to cover in another episode about your dr dr dramatic story of near death's door and coming back and building your body back up to this point. Um, Wrestling, pro wrestling has always been synonymous with body guys. 
I think mm-hmm. always will be, no matter how much some of the guys tend to veer away from that now. Um, but I think you're always going to, it's, 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 it's a part of it. And it was a huge part of it when you were there. Um, but now again, segueing into something a little bit more serious for the viewers that may help some of you who are considering a career in professional wrestling, the topic of steroids. Okay. Yeah. So, so now steroids were rampant in pro wrestling in the nineties. Um, you know, obviously things changed. It shifted to growth hormone experiments with growth hormone and things like that in the two thousands. But today, um, steroids are still out there, but people have another choice. Uh, and that's TRT. You and I mm-hmm. talk about this off camera Rico. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's legal just so everybody knows we're not talking about anything taboo here. Uh, I myself use TRT. I think it's very effective. And, um, you know, we thought we'd take a moment just to talk about some of that, just in case someone is, someone wants to be a body guy in pro wrestling, but they may be thinking of going, you know, the not so good way about it with the steroid, which can be extremely damaging. So Rico, tell us some of your, um, a little bit about your thoughts about TRT. Let's start there. Well, with the TRT, I believe in it. And like I said, I turned 63 in a couple of weeks. Hard to believe. Yeah, 63. And after 40, your your testosterone does uh, drop in your body. Um, uh, And you need to replace that Mm -hmm. because that's not healthy either. You know, you get to you get depressed you don't have energy you lose vitality for doing things so everything has to be chemically balanced Mm -hmm. now uh i was on trt through a doctor Mm -hmm. and that's when i got blood clots okay all right uh and uh the cancer doctor said well it's because you're doing trt Mm -hmm. because he had no other explanation for it and uh so he stopped me from doing TRT okay. or else, you know, cause I had three of them in my leg that started that illness for three years because it, then it broke into some other things, mm-hmm. other terrible conditions. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I got over it. And then a couple of years ago, 2021, 20, right around there, I was having that down feeling, no energy, no drive, no ambition, mm-hmm. And so I got back on TRT Mm -hmm. and everything is normal to me again. Yeah. You know, I I love going to the gym. I love working. I love, you know, I love life. Mm -hmm. You know, life is exciting to me again, whether I'm out at the range shooting my gun or doing archery. As you see my kids in the background, I'm an avid Aquarius. You know, I have a 80, this is 80. I have an 80 downstairs. African cichlids, South American cichlids, and I have a little 20 gallon here. I'm raising uh biker fish, which are look like little dinosaurs. You know, there's fossils of them. You yeah. know, they can breathe air or they can get their oxygen through the water. They're just that's remarkable. Yeah. I, I bought them, they were the size of a, a pencil this yeah. big. Yeah. Now they're this big and as big as the finger. Wow. And they're just swimming around. <laughs> so I enjoy that. That's my my hobby. So I'm, I'm into that again. Yeah. <clears throat> now, if you're going to consider TRT, I just learned this recently. Um, it brings up your red blood count. Yeah. Okay. And you can't have too many red blood cells. Mm-hmm. So you have to get a, a full body. Mm-hmm. That's the technical term or they bleed you out. You know, uh, unfortunately I cannot donate my blood because I'm on blood thinners. Mm. So I'm unable to donate. So I have to go to my blood doctor, which is on ecology. And he has to bleed me out 500 cc's to a liter every couple of months, which will keep my red blood count down and I won't get clots. Got it. So that's my case. Yeah. You know, people who don't have that, I still suggest that you get your blood tested if you're going to go on TRT. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only do one cc a week. Mm-hmm. Just to bring up my testosterone levels to a normal level, not yeah. for bodybuilding, mm-hmm. not, not to go get big, 
Right. No, I do it to keep my levels where it's supposed to be at my age. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes so sense. that's why I do it. Yeah. You know, and as far as the wrestling, mm -hmm. uh, when I did, um, you know, I could have done steroids to get bigger, but I was 40 years old. Why mm -hmm. am I going to get on steroids? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to be as big as Batista, Lesnar, Triple H. Mm -hmm. Those guys were already John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're already built. Yeah. So that's why I chose the entertainment mm -hmm. to be a character, a character that people love to hate. Yeah. You know, so that that's why I went there. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not the steroid for bodybuilding. Yeah. And if wrestlers, I'm going to say, you know, you got to cycle it because mm -hmm. I did steroids for bodybuilding when I was in my twenties, mm -hmm. but I went to a physician Yeah, and his name was Dr. Romeo. Mm -hmm. He was, he was on the Nevada athletic board, you okay. know, for boxing and stuff like that and events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was very strict. Mm -hmm. You know, eight weeks on, eight weeks off, eight yeah. weeks on, eight weeks off. And back in the 80s, I mean, people were shooting steroids in the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and overabundance. And they weren't taking human hormone. Right. They were taking equipoise, which is a horse hormone, you know, uh, just a lot of weird stuff that they just chose disregard yeah. as danger. You know, uh, I've taken nothing but human Mm -hmm. testosterone mm -hmm. you know but i did when i did steroids for bodybuilding uh i did it with a doctor mm -hmm. and i i got great results mm -hmm. with the the cycles and stuff like that because i started i was 176 pounds mm -hmm. I, I could barely bench 225 mm -hmm. uh could squat 275 mm -hmm. and i was like i said only 176 pounds after a couple of cycles I jumped up to 218 pounds, mm -hmm. but bench 420, Gosh. I could squat 500, yeah. I could deadlift 600, and yeah. I was curling 90-pound dumbbells. That's a lot, Rico. Wow. Yeah. So within the, that frame, I did it. Yeah. But you got to watch your temper. Yeah. It does yeah. have, it does affect your fuse. Yeah. And my fuse got a lot shorter than it was. I have a long fuse anyway. Yeah. Well, Rico, my, I, I want to jump in there too, because um, first of all, we're not doctors, just so everybody no. knows. We're not yeah. doctors. We're no. just saying what we've experienced and, and what we know is readily available. But I'd say even with TRT, you know, something that like I've got, I'm due for a blood test soon. You have to, because even with TRT, sometimes the test can go way high and the fuse, yes. can, and the fuse can get shorter, you know? So you've got to, it, it's not going to have the same effect as a steroid because it's not creating that protein synthesis in the muscles. So it's not sucking up. You're not going to get the water weight muscle bloating. You're not going right. to get that, but you are going to get the strength. You are going to build the lean muscle faster. It's going to keep you more youthful. Let's just yes. use that word youthful. You will gain strength and things like that, but it's, it's the mindset that I think you talked about Rico, which is so vitally important in a world now where we seem to be plagued with low testosterone levels. Um, the foods that you were eating, Rico, you know, 40 years ago when you were maturing as a younger man and me when I was eating, you know, when I was younger, totally different from what we're being served today. Now yeah. you have to seek out organic. You yeah. cannot eat the processed food because they contain, uh, and I don't know if some of your viewers may or may not be familiar, soy is extremely damaging to males and testosterone. Yes, it is. So if you eat soy, Look forward to your testosterone levels dropping immensely. Um, it is not not good for males uh, to, to to do so. But Rico, thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know what what you just did there um, about you know the differences between steroids and also the differences of understanding. Yeah, maybe you're not going to be a huge body guy of 250 pounds, but that gives you the opportunity to work on your personality, much like the stylist Rico. Kind yeah. of, you know, so, you know, you work on that aspect of yourself and that gives you a whole other dynamic where again, you're equally as entertaining in a different fashion. Um, but I'm still trying to get a 500 pound squat. Darn, yeah. A lot of weight, Rico. 600 deadlift. It's a lot. And how old were you at the time? Uh, this is, uh, 
right around gladiators right after gladiators okay so yeah. that would have been what late i was 28 28 uh yeah this this would be 9091 9091 because i was the 9091 champ fall champion and then right after that and we've got a we've got it now you've just brought something up rico so audience members if you didn't know <laughs> rico, <laughs> rico tell us the gladiator story well, I was in California. I got injured. I I uh, strained my ACL uh, in construction. I was on the couch watching TV. And Jim and I came on the screen and said, all contenders, are you ready for the ultimate challenge? Try out for the American Gladiators. Try out for the American Gladiators. And I went, oh, my God, he's talking to me. So I got up and I started rehabbing myself and doing all kinds of other exercises like to simulate the wall. I'd climb up a baseball backstop on the inside. Yeah. I do 40 yard dashes in the beach sand. Cause I was living in California in sneakers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, charging up hills. And uh, there was four cities and I, that they went to try out and I tried out universal studios. And even in that tryout, uh, the producer came over because they were losing two gladiators. Titan and Malibu weren't coming back. So they were going to get two gladiators. The producer had me try out as a gladiator because I was 218 pounds. Mm -hmm. I had a good physique, 32 inch waist. Okay. So he told me, well, we'll send you a letter, whether you're a contender or a gladiator. And uh, they sent me a contender letter, mm -hmm. which is good. And after viewing Muscles and Mayhem, uh, I'm glad I was a contender. Because those poor gladiators, the guys I worked with, were treated like garbage, robbed of their money, didn't get royalties off of all that merchandise. Because it was a popular show. Yeah. I mean, I mean, all the guys were really good. You know, Nitro, Laser, Gemini. You know, from whistle to whistle, we were competing. Yeah. You yeah. know, but afterwards, we sat and talked, and I got along with all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, Nitro, Laser, Gemini, Turbo, Thunder. Mm -hmm. You know, they were they were actually nice guys. Yeah. You know, we've sat and ate lunch because it's 10 hours mm -hmm. to do one show. 10 hours? You have to be 10 hours. Wow. 10 hours. Because they run the spring and the fall at the same time. Okay. They run it because you're only there at Universe Studios for about two weeks, mm -hmm. up to two weeks. And they got the whole whole season done. And then they put you under a gag order. Yeah. So you don't run home. Yeah, hey, I'm champ. I'm champ. You know, <laughs> you have to stay yeah. quiet. So I yeah. had to stay quiet from July till December. Gosh, man, that must have been, you must have been in anguish there. Were you, were you paid for that, Rico? Did they pay you got for that? 10 grand? Yeah. Everybody oh. who goes gets paid a little something because okay. they do four rounds, preliminary, quarterfinal, semifinal, finals. Okay. So, and so everybody gets paid a little something. Mm -hmm. uh, I got 10 grand for being champ. Mm -hmm. That's not, 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 bad, not a bad payday for what, two weeks? Yeah, I didn't even work the whole two weeks. I worked four times. Wow. <laughs> there you go. You got your taste. That Was that your first taste into TV? No. I, when I was a young man, I went to military school, like I said, in Lake Geneva. Mm -hmm. And the movie Damien Omen 2 filmed at my military academy so i got to be an extra in that movie oh so yeah uh i was on america's funniest home videos a couple times huh. uh i did a b movie yeah. uh, that was uh, uh what was it called see it's so b rated i forgot <laughs> i don't know but it was one yeah. i did a commercial yeah. um and then i got things happened in Hollywood that I did not like. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, that's it. I'm, yeah. I'm done with the acting business. I'm not going to do this, this or that. Yeah. You know, I have a very strong moral character that way, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. So I, I gave it up and then, um, you know, I was a stunt man. I played Batman at six flags, the Michael Keaton, Batman. Yeah. And then at the same time, I was at universal studios in the Conan show as the bad guy who Azura who yeah. held the shield and the ax. Yeah. What and then, I, and then, Oh, after that I was, um, 
I'm on the video for the Dungeons and Dragons game. Oh, wow. Wait, which... I, I played three characters. I was a knight. Yeah. I was an orc, which is a pig, and I was the minotaur. So yeah. I played three different characters that they yeah. put in the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I did a little bit here and there. So I presume, so you had an agent at the time, or were you doing this just by auditioning yourself? Well, when no, I'd had the, I had an agent, mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, when I, when I finally stopped Hollywood, yeah, got yeah. rid of the agent and I finished out Batman and the Conan show and then, uh, did the dungeon and dragons thing. Yeah. And then, uh, I got involved with the power team. Yes. The power shortly team. after that, and I, I was only supposed to do it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Ended up being two years. Yeah. And you toured the country with that and you inspired toured the world. I mean, we went to other overseas and everything. What were some of your fondest memories from that? getting to talk to the kids mm, yeah yeah uh as an ordained minister yeah so helping kids you know uh talk against suicide teen pregnancy uh low self-esteem mm. you know and sit around because i use my american gladiator quote-unquote fame so mm. they would listen mm -hmm. yeah you know uh we uh on top of the crusade shows we got to go into the schools and do feats of strength you know rip phone books baseball bats break bricks mm -hmm. stuff like that get their attention yeah couldn't mention god but we mentioned basically i was a dare spokesman mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know on on you know don't follow the crowd lead the crowd yeah you know peer pressure that doesn't make you weak you stand up makes you strong mm -hmm. and coming from people like there was a usc linebacker somebody a running back from the seattle seahawks on the team at that time you know that that notoriety from there yeah helps get their attention yeah yeah and you said you know, yeah and you certainly did a good thing and that certainly carried over with your character in pro wrestling you know um and something you said there i wanted to touch on to throw back to when we were talking about trt you talked about some people there that were struggling with depression and things like that Again, anybody who's watching this, don't just automatically assume that you're depressed. It's because there's something wrong with you. Go and get a blood test. Check your hormone levels because mm -hmm. hormones play a huge role in the way your, your mind works. You're, like you said, when you were going low, you felt no drive, no passion, no enthusiasm, tired, fatigue, you know, fatigued, all that. So, and I, and I can concur because I felt the same way before yeah. I started TRT. So it's not, it's there's not necessarily something wrong with you. It's, it's just check, go to your doctor, ask for a full blood panel test, include your, t if you're a female, include your estrogen, estradiol, your, even females have testosterone. Yes. Include all of that. Um, men too, we have estrogen and estradiol in our, in our blood work check that yours could be too high it needs to come back down you know it could be anything so yeah we stress that because you know we hope that you know by doing this maybe somebody somewhere will be helped on some level by some of the things we're saying here yeah because yeah. we've experienced it you and i yep. i've already gone through it yeah you know and, and this could be a sh all of a sudden you know we could be talking and it rings a bell in your head going hey this hey that yep. and we're telling you what we did Mm -hmm. to yeah. to get it fixed yeah so you know you don't have to live like that right. Right. you know life is precious anyway mm -hmm. and you yeah. know get get the most out of it yep and get i'm a poster child for that yep absolutely you are a poster <laughs> child we can't even get into everything in this first episode of what rico has done in his life but you did mention hollywood too which is a perfect yeah. segue into another topic because we understand that, you know, there's more to life than pro wrestling. A lot of fans are going to want to kill me for saying that. But the reality is there is. Now, Hollywood, all right? Mm -hmm. Beetlejuice just came out after, what, the second Beetlejuice after almost 40 years since wow. the first one, Rico? Um, I now, love the first one. I was going to ask, were you a fan of the first one? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Are you a Tim Burton enthusiast? Do you like his work? Uh, well, yeah, I liked him. I liked he, what he did with the first Batman yeah. with Keaton. Yeah. And he, he seems to work real, real well with Michael Keaton because, you know, they, they hit it off and they 
they make some movies. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's the Batman I played at Six Flags, the Michael yeah. Keaton, Tim Burton Batman. Yeah. And I'm saying, honestly, Rico, I think that that was the best Batman. I I, I mean, I know that they, I haven't seen any of the new ones just simply because, you know, for me, Michael Keaton was it, you know, yeah. the kid. And, and and I remember he he played it so well. Um, so to be able to portray that in Six Flags, man, that must have been you must have been really excited about doing that. Oh, I was I did five shows a day. Wow. Five shows. And uh it, I, every, I really felt like I'm Batman. When I said I'm Batman, I'm Batman. So what, <laughs> so what was this show like, Rico? You say five shows a day. So what, what did yeah, it consist of? It was of? a stunt show. Um, Vicky Vale, Joker, and it was broken into parts. You know, uh, uh, audience participation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, came out as Bruce Wayne. I had the Batman suit under it and that peeled off put the hood on and I came out in the Batmobile, which somebody else behind me drove, which the audience went, went nuts. Cause I would get out of the Batmobile and I climbed up this uh, industrial ladder yeah. and I turn around and I make the cape flip. Yeah. And I turn around like, like Keaton used to. Yeah. And yeah. I said, meet me at main Wayne Manor. Yeah. And then I go walk away and the car took off by itself yeah. The audience was like, whoa, you know, <laughs> and then I had to learn how, you know, roll, ride a motorcycle, the bat bike. Oh, yeah. So, you know, there was a bad guy on top of some truss. I had to pop a wheelie and fire the cannon at him and he fell into a garbage can. Uh, so it was a stunt show. And then the Joker with the like in the second Batman, all those guys were on motorcycles. So we did the motorcycle chase and stuff like that. And yeah. uh, of course, Joker catches me yeah. and then a. And then all of a sudden uh, he talks about, and then all of a sudden you hear a cannon go off and the dummy Batman gets shot out of a, one of these chimneys yeah. and he's like, ah, oh, Batman's gone. Ha 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 ha. And then I come out and then we have the big fight in the Batmobile as it drives around and, yeah. you know, and then of course I take out all the Joker's men and, yeah. you know, save the day, save Vicky Vale. Ta -da. Man, that sounds so cool. You're just describing it. I'm imagining it all in my mind. Yeah. So how how long did you do that for? One season. Just one season. Yeah. What was the pay good? Oh yeah. yeah. Between the two stunt shows, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, man, that sounds cool. So so but again, coming back to, you know, great Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Good, coming going back to Hollywood. So what what's your opinion on all these remakes then? Cuz even Bill and Ted did it a few years ago. With, I mean, Bill and Ted's bogus journey was 91. So this would have been an almost 30 year gap. And now you've got Beetlejuice is almost 40 years. What's your opinion about all these remakes? Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they're realizing that it worked then, it could work now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, plus if you got the right actors, mm -hmm. you know, you can't just do a remake. Yeah, you got to have the right actors. Uh, for me, I'll, I'll shoot the example for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I liked four, five, and six. Okay, yeah, I didn't like one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I didn't like the prequels. Yeah, uh, I liked four, New Hope, uh, Jedi, and uh, Empire Strikes Back, and then Jedi. Yeah, you know what. Uh, you know what, Rico? We should get um, a gentleman. That would be great for you. It'd be a great treat for us both, actually. I worked with a gentleman who produced uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and Indiana Jones. He's a, oh. he's a producer in L.A. Uh, he produced also Demolition Man with Stallone, yep. Wesley Snipes. Snipes. So I'm going to reach out to him. Uh, so viewers, don't hold us to it, but I, I'll see if he'll be a guest and come on with us that'd be great to have him on in sort of like a pop culture segment yeah we, we could talk more about that so so you're saying so for example so, so if it's not broken don't fix it and i yeah. would agree i would agree with you because at one time i heard that they were even going to try and redo uh the never ending story which was a huge hit for kids yeah. in the 80s a flying dog yes yeah falcor yep <laughs> So yeah, they were gonna they were gonna do try and do a remake on that, but I haven't seen. Just so the audience knows, I haven't seen Beetlejuice uh, two. I don't know. I Rico, have you seen it? No, not yet. Not yet. 
not yet. So we can't speak on exactly. I've heard from the synopsis that uh, the Winona Ryder character actually becomes an item with the Michael Keaton monster, whatever the heck he's oh called. My gosh. In this one. So, I mean, I, I don't know how they figured that one out, but um, that's what I hear happens in the story. Um, what was interesting to me, Rico, is seeing the pictures of Michael Keaton back in that costume. Yeah. It's like 40 years. I can, I just, I just try and imagine like what was going through their heads when they're on set and they were seeing each other again back in the, you know, it's just like 40. That's a long time, man. Between yeah. Well, I told you when I did that signing in New York. Oh, yeah. I, I hadn't put this tiger suit on in 20. Yeah. And it fit. Yeah. I was shocked when I could fit in my pants. Yeah. Well, you, you know what's shocking, Rika, as well, as I'm looking at your shoulders right there, is that shirt has not stretched. It's still tight on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you know when they get loose on the edge? Yeah. <laughs> it's still tight there. Yeah. Uh, so, so well, maybe... Sorry. Well, Keaton, Keaton liked doing the Batman because he appeared as Batman in the Flash movie. Which, fl the, the original the, Flash movie? No, no, Flash, this latest Flash that came out when he goes back in time. Oh, it was Keaton. He, he was actually his Batman in that movie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. When did this come out? This evaded me. Oh, yeah, this was months ago. It's it, it it's It's on netflix now so it's been out a while but yeah he comes out as that dimensions batman wow i didn't know that i have to yeah. check that out i'd like to see i'd like to see I, again i don't understand why they changed well actually it was the director who changed between the second batman and batman forever val kilmer you remember when val kilmer took I, over i i like clooney and i like kilmer as actors i didn't like him as batman right <clears throat> and uh then they moved on to christian bale mm-hmm who did a different he did the batman and, and for that way that was good but i'm more keaton batman yeah and then in the marvel with justice league and stuff like that they put in affleck right yeah. and i think affleck did a good job but keaton's still my favorite yeah yeah i think but uh, affleck did better than kilmer and clooney okay i gotta ask you rico then superman christopher reeve Okay. Who, in your mind, who was the best Superman? Well, the funny thing is the original was George Reeves. George then we Reeves. had Christopher Reeves. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I like the Man of Steel guy. The, the, the British guy. What's his yeah, name? Yeah. Um, it was uh, on the tip of my tongue. I just. Cal Calvin or something like that. Cavlin or. Yeah. Uh, Calvin. Something like that. <sighs> Henry Calville. Henry Calville. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah Calville. Yeah. I, I like him in the Man of Steel, the way he portrays Superman and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that is more what I think a Superman would be in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Christopher did the comic book Superman. Yeah. And he did it very well. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, so that was the comic book Superman. This is kind of like what superman would be nowadays yeah so are you a big rico saying that are you a big comic book fan marvel comic universe fan i like marvel universe mm -hmm. i like the iron man thor captain america i like the marvel universe but it's funny i played a dc character <laughs> there you go it's always the way right You're yeah then else you'll get given something else that's just the way it goes but man that's it but Again, just that must have been such a thrill for you to do. Um, you've done so much. Like I said, we can't even encapsulate it in 20 episodes, in 30 episodes. You've done so much. Um, God, through, God has been good to me. Yeah, very uh, he's, good. He's opened the doors, and I just knew when to walk through them. Yep, yep, absolutely. And that's true. So, Rico, uh, have you got any parting comments for this, the premiere episode of Styling for our viewers? Well, for those who hit the subscribe button and are listening, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of subjects, not always wrestling, and just things that everyday people go through and stuff like that. You know, what I've learned through 60-something years 
of life and and what you know yeah. and you know better yourself be all that you can be yeah. you know uh don't let anybody tell you any different like i said when i told the story doctor told me i'd never wrestle again mm -hmm. uh, okay that's what you say mm -hmm. but you're only a practicing physician you're not the physician right yeah you know and you know my motto mm -hmm. yep so i'm going to say it for everybody for the new people Mm -hmm. And for the people who already know what I'm going to say, yeah. and this is how I've lived. And this is why I've accomplished so much. Mm -hmm. And it goes like this, what your mind can conceive, your heart can achieve. Yep. And that's exactly right. And there's it's... nothing more powerful than the human soul. Mm -hmm. And, and for viewers, just so you know, when Rico said that to me, the first time we did our very first interview, which you can also find on the channel on Victoire. You just got to go back uh, a few months. But uh, when you said that to me, Rico, um, I looked at it as God speaking through you and you inspired me and some things are going on now. I mean, amazing things. Like I said, we've got this podcast. I'm involved in other projects with some of your brethren from the world of pro wrestling, but I'm also involved in another journey in pro wrestling, which we won't yes. talk about here. But it's it's uh, it's it's remarkable and incredible, and I feel very blessed to be able to do it. But that what you said to me a few months ago stuck with me, and it has, you know, it has lit a fuel, a fire, rekindled, uh, and and it, it's burning. And I, like I said, uh, that's what it's all about. If we can, you know, through your experiences, Rico, you know, through everything you've learned and garnered in life, if we can share that with these these people out there and give them something that's entertaining inspiring and motivating encouraging and the behind the scenes of pro wrestling yeah so. we'll we'll talk about that. we'll touch on that and uh you know uh you know they can write in yep what, what they want us to discuss and yep. between us you know we can research it and yep yep and talk and like i said i've done a lot of things mm -hmm. been around this world twice yep from different careers yep. you know and like i said if we just help one yep. that that's good yep so as rico said as my co-host here said write us in send us your questions leave comments at the bottom of these videos i will always go through them i will share with rico with what you guys tell us and if you've got a particular topic you want us to research and talk about we will do that um you know just uh, keep everything pg this is a yes. this is a family friendly show um uh, we want people of all ages to be able to enjoy this across the board so rico my uh, my co-host next week we will be back with the vince mcmahon netflix documentary special i can't wait to see that i'm on the edge of my seat yeah i really am Spell yeah. especially i worked with the guy seven mm -hmm. years Yep. Yep. If anyone knows Vince McMahon, we don't know what's going to be released in this Netflix documentary yet. Nope. We know there's a lot circulating about Vince McMahon. We won't go into those details today, but next week, Rico and I will be breaking down that documentary. And then I will be asking Rico some questions from his point of view and his perspective, a man who was there for seven years of what he saw, what he heard, how he experienced Vince McMahon. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss next week's episode. But until then, Rico. Keep styling. Keep styling. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>